Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We'd love to hear about you, right, Gina? Well, Gina will be here in a moment or two. She'll do some news. We got bald Brian. I have a 13-inch hog. Is that normal? And Dan Dunn back. He's brought his libations. Yes. I uh, literally just came from the airport from Dan's old neighborhood and uh, came straight on into work. So we were in uh, Magoobies, or playing Magoobies. That was in Baltimore. And then we went to Philly and played the Keswick Theater, which is uh, near Dan's old neighborhood. Right, Dan? It is, yeah. Did you bring back any uh, vitriol with you? Anger, tension? No, no. Uh, Keswick is bitterness. nice, a beautiful town. It's uh, it's about 40 minutes outside of uh, the middle of Philly. It's a nice city. These places, uh, Detroit's this way, Philly's this way. You know, when you get outside a little bit, you can get in some uh, decent neighborhoods. So we did that. We took the train. We took the Biden train. We mm-hmm. took the one that, uh, well, we went from Baltimore to Philly, but I guess he goes to, I guess he would go to Delaware. But anyway, we're on that same train that he always talks about, the Amtrak train, going back and forth. So, uh, And I was working with uh, Lynch on the book on the train, so <laughs> that's how the Biden thing uh, Was Lynch there about. or was it over the phone? Uh, I was over the phone. Perfect. So always he, over the phone. He was no matter uh, where you are, always over the, the phone. He said, "Home, I'm on the road. I was going to be in a train for an hour, so I thought, well, we could get something done. So uh, went there, went to the uh, Simeon Museum. They had a uh, thing. They did a tribute to uh, Willie T. Ribs there, and it just turned out to be perfect timing that the Simeon Automotive Museum, which has some of the most prestigious Lama vintage race cars ever uh, was doing a thing with Willie that started at like three or something. So right when we blew into town. So um, Mike and I went over there. Chris went to the uh, theater to get uh, set up, got up, got ourselves that hour this morning, That's man. Huge. That was that, that, traveling. That was huge because uh, we left the st- we we did the show at the Keswick. We went back to Philly, did dinner at about 11 at night, got out of there about 1 a.m. We're going to meet in the lobby at 7 a.m. So that that was a good hour we got. Still not enough. I have uh, two observations I'd like to make mm-hmm. first. You mentioned dinner. I just want to point out that you uh, owe me dinner. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, at one point during our recent Vegas Excursion. DX, you yeah. invited to me to go out to dinner, mm-hmm. and I have no recollection. I don't that. think you were ready for dinner by the end of that show, but I'm still mm-hmm. holding you to that. Secondly, these new chairs you have here. It's interesting to be doing a liquor segment because I feel like a, a small child. <laughs> my feet I, aren't touching anything, so my legs are dangling like a child, and we're well, about to drink. I remember the uh, God. Remember when you were a kid? I don't think they have them anymore. Do they have them, the booster chairs they put at the restaurants? That's what I feel like I'm on a booster chair (laughs) right now. So how far is uh, Keswick from uh, where you grew up? Um, Well, I grew up in a neighborhood called Frankfurt, which is a very rough neighborhood. And that's where I was young. And then we moved up to the northeast part of Philadelphia, which is really probably 25 minutes away. Not Mm -hmm. not too far at all. And my mom still lives there. Yeah. Crazy mom? Yeah, was she at the show by any chance? No, <laughs> uh, she was. She would have been with Jim Morrison. She's married to him. I, I think. Know I think that, I yeah. would have. Uh, I think I would have known if uh, your mom was there. I mean, your mom, not anyone else's. <laughs> you mom. absolutely. You would, have known. <laughs> you would have noticed her. She probably would have been wearing a nightgown. Uh, you didn't like to get dressed up. And House coat does it. Yeah. What's it? Yeah. It's it's a good. We uh, we had some uh, interesting times on the road. I think Mike may have. Uh, beat himself because August, August because of um, in his, in the food department, because we took the train. Now we were in uh, Tim, Timonium, uh, which is where Go- Magoobies is, which is in Baltimore okay. outside of Baltimore. But Tim, Timonium is 20, 25 minutes outside of Baltimore, and there's nothing. There's no Starbucks. There's no malls. There's no food courts. There's it's it's pretty kind of it's corporate headquarter esque, and oh. there's nothing going on there. But Magoobies is there, and that's fine. But we had nothing to do, and we had like a I guess our 
I guess we had a train that was leaving about 1.30. So I said, uh, well, why don't we go to Baltimore a little early and then we can find a sports bar or something and hang out a little bit because there's nothing to do where mm. we are 20 minutes outside of Baltimore. So we found, uh, we went in about 20 minutes early, uh, found the train station, found a sports bar. And uh, now it's like noon and uh, okay, we'll get a beer We'll wait, and then we'll go get get our train. But then it was like, eh, what do we eat? Do we get some wings? Do we get some fries? Do we get a burger? It wasn't really lunchtime. It wasn't it was kind of past breakfast. People were working pretty late the night before. Mm -hmm. We did two shows at McGooby's. And um, we uh, came time for Mike to order. Now, I wasn't going to order anything, or if I was going to order anything, I would have got, like, uh, I don't know, chop salad or something or whatever uh, probably not a chop salad sports bar fair i would have got Baltimore some sliders is famous or for their chop salad by yeah. the way. everybody knows that yeah. mike what can't did, leave town what did mike get <laughs> chris mike ordered eggplant parmesan oh wow eggplant bold move. parmesan at a sports bar wow. at uh noon and a huge pile of pasta oh and uh, eggplant parmesan showed up. And I was like, Mike, no one's ever even ordered. I, how is it even on the menu? Yeah, that's how there's a goof. Uh, yeah. Now, Mike ordered uh, eggplant parmesan to eat in Baltimore at a sports bar. Is that a big piece of jack cheese at or Swiss no. cheese melted on top? It's it's a... It's, first off, how... What is that? How oh. good can the eggplant parm be... At a sports, sports bar, bar in Baltimore, and then Mike does what Mike always has to do, which he has to chop everything up. What a child. It's super annoying with pasta, because he cuts all the <laughs> pasta. He, sure. he took the eggplant parmesan, he completely, uh, he, 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 Defenestrated it. Wait, what is it? Defenestrate is <laughs> a word. Defenestrate. He yeah. threw it out a window. The point is, he, he pummeled it. He just destroyed it he with diced. his knife. And, and, and he's diced going it. to, and you're on your way to Philadelphia from Right. This. See, that's a big. That's a big mistake right there because you, I would be saving room for the Philly cheesesteak. Always room. You, you got to do. Mike's always got There's room. Always room. He could eat that so, that giant plate of pasta and then eat a Philly cheesesteak. Oh steak? yeah! Wow. Yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, we ended up at a steakhouse <laughs> that night, and we ended up at the steakhouse. Mike caught it where they filmed the Sixth Sense. Oh, uh, no kidding! Yeah, in it, Philly. It, yeah, Wait, so what walk, scene? I, I well, didn't we'll put it, have we'll a put recollection the, the of it. The interior of the restaurant here. But, so it uh, was an old oh, bank. Oh, that I see dead people old, there. It was an old scene. bank. Yeah, that's the place. And uh, yeah. they were playing uh, jazz, and it was beautiful. Oh, it wasn't it was, a restaurant in the movie. That was, uh, that, was this the... It was in the movie, according to Mike. Mike yeah. then found right. the movie on the plane, on the flight oh. home, and had to match the scene up from where no we shit. were. <laughs> well, it's just, we're on the plane for oh. six hours. Yeah. That's it right there. Oh, when he comes to anniversary dinner or whatever, and she gets up and leaves. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, so the we were asking the waiter the about- the restaurant I asked you to marry me in. Why won't she answer him? Yeah, so we were, we were asking <laughs> the waiter about the restaurant. He was telling us, uh, yeah, they filmed, like Adam Sandler was just here filming. Wow. And also, they filmed The uh, the Sixth Sense here. And Mike just went, I knew it. <laughs> like he, wow. Like he Mike spotted knew it, it. Right when you got in. I'll tell you this. So when you when you leave Philly, when you're going through the airport, you're on the People Mover. They have lined up all the posters of all the movies, The Sixth sure, Sense sure. and Creed. Any number of Shyamalan movies. Rocky. Yeah, okay. Everything else. But sandwich in between The Sixth Sense and Rocky and Creed is Mannequin. Oh, and that's right. And my my Andrew feeling McCarthy. is, is you, you don't have to put every yeah. movie that was filmed here. You put the notable movies. Yeah. I'm sure they made a couple of snuff films in the 50s <laughs> yeah. there. They don't need to be represented at You're the right. airport. It was just Mannequin, like the, the worst 80s movie of all time. Just right in between uh, Rocky 1 and Creed. The John, happening. John yeah. Wanamaker. That's the name of the department store where they filmed Mannequin. Oh, really? And down to, yeah, that's where they shot it. Kim Cattrall. I mean, what would be the best? I mean, obviously Rocky. Which is real. I mean, he's a real person. Mm -hmm. And Philadelphia, great movie. That sure. shot, uh, 12 Monkeys was shot in sure, Philadelphia. Sure. Yeah, they were all on the wall right next there. to Mannequin. Mannequin. <laughs> Come on. All right. You so had what? Andrew McCarthy on the show. I have. Did you call him out about Mannequin when he was on? Uh, I'll say no, yes, maybe. He was his career. He was, he was just every movie was Andrew mm -hmm. McCarthy back then. 
So what'd you bring us? What uh, right. libation? So here? I realized in all the time we've been doing this, we have never done a liqueur mm-hmm. segment. And there's, it, I love liqueur. Mm-hmm. Liqueur is liquor that's sweetened generally. Mm-hmm. It's some sort of a sugar or something in there. And there are so many great liqueurs. And a lot of times liqueur, which are formerly known back in the day, they would call them cordials, uh-huh. cordials, which I think is very sophisticated. Right. Yeah. Like, when you're so, for instance, Adam in Vegas a couple weeks ago mm-hmm. was not drinking. He was not sipping cordials. No, he was slamming whiskey. That's which right. Is a, a whole different conversation. I was over yeah, served. You, you that wasn't my fault. So uh, it was not your fault. I all I can say is when I sat down to get on the thing, I looked over and I saw something I'd never seen before. Mm. Uh, it was a mixture of glee and bewilderment uh, going on with you and all the lights of Vegas in the background. And I was like, oh, this is going to be uh, interesting yeah. next. 30 minutes or so, yes. and it was. You did not disappoint. I was drunk, too, but by comparison, I was a judge, so yes. I was a judge there. All right, liqueur. Known as cordials back in the day, you know, a lot of times it's a mixing agent, but a lot of these you can drink on your own, and so I brought in I brought in five that we're going to bang through here. We got the, the first one is called Shinola, okay, and this is a made with passion fruit mm. in the Dominican mm. Republic. It, it, it's the name of, that's what they call passion fruit in the DR, Shinola. This is a, uh, a delicious brand launched in 2013. Each bottle of this contains roughly six whole passion fruits. You're going to get a lot of that flavor. Did you try it yet? Yeah, it's Would delectable. Like, tastes I, like my Hawaii passion fruit margarita yes. or whatever. It's I'm, like, oh, I'm back. Oh, I'm angry so at passion fruit in general, but <laughs> because they've ruined tea, but mm. this tastes very good. This is, uh, I mean, a, an absolutely delicious drink. On its own, we're sipping it right now on the rocks, which is kind of... A good way to get your day going, and uh, but you could put this in. I think if you put this in some uh, with some sparkling wine, sort of mm-hmm. a, a mimosa type situation going mm-hmm. on here, it is thirty three dollars a bottle. Again, all estate made in the Dominican Republic. The fruits all grown down there. Uh, you are you a passion fruit fan, uh, Brian? I always worry because there's a lot of things you don't like. Oh no, I love passion fruit, you like do. actual, real, like from the islands passion fruit. Because like Adam has this, you know, the rant about passion fruit. The the idea being that it's just become this catch-all for generically sweet. Like oh, passion fruit soda. It's like no, it's deodorant. Just, yeah, yeah. It's just it's just yeah. Sweet. No, yeah. But actual pat like lilikoi passion fruit, awesome. You know, passion fruit's actually a berry. Classified as a berry, it's called pepper. I don't yeah. know that I've ever bought passion fruit, sliced it up, and eaten no. it raw. I've just had it ruin my iced tea, but <laughs> fine. This one's great too. It doesn't. You don't have a lot of acidity in this, mm-hmm. which yeah, you can get a lot nice. of times, and it could really go in a lot of drinks. I think you could put yeah. this chinola in a lot of different stuff. It's got a good looking bottle. Put some tequila and lime in there. And you, yourself you could do it up. Yeah. You could totally do it up. A spicy margarita would be good. A daiquiri, I think, would be a really good mm-hmm. thing for this drink. Also, uh, if you did like a white sangria, basically mm-hmm. as a flavoring agent for almost anything, but also straight up neat. Is Where do you, you get this stuff at Trader Joe's? Yeah, you get anywhere. it anywhere? Yeah, you can get this everywhere. Yeah. Uh, everything I brought here today. Oh, I know what it is you don't like. You don't like ginger, right? I don't have a problem. I, what do you I, not I'll like? Tolerate. Grapefruit. Grapefruit. Don't like grapefruit. That's it. Yeah, all right. I didn't bring anything great. Good. Yeah, but you're good with passion fruit. Love it. Okay. This is great. So we're off to a good start. Chinola with a C. Now, we have an issue here today because we have this giant table. Gina is normally next to me and we pass. Yes. We pass things along. I don't know how I'm going to do that. Oh. Oh, we got got, got Gina Jr. It comes Gina looking like Chris. All right, so we want to move on to the next one? Sure. All right, we got, oh boy, oh, am I excited for this one. This is one of my favorites. It's called Amarula, Mm -hmm. all right? Amarula is from South Africa. There's only one place in the world where the marula tree grows, and that is in South Africa. One time a year that the fruit from the marula tree comes down, and that's at the height of summertime. This is a tree that is protected by the government of South Africa. You can't do anything with your trees. You can't cultivate these trees. They People have tried. They only grow where they want to grow. Okay. Okay. And um, Amarula has been around since 1989. What's also interesting is when the fruit's ready, how they know it's time to harvest is elephants go batshit for this stuff. They love it. Mm-hmm. So once yeah. the elephants start to migrate towards the Amarula trees, they know that it's time ready to, to go. take them mm-hmm. away from the elephants. Yeah. They can't uh, 
They can't cultivate it. I mean, you can't just you can't, plant you can't it in your plant backyard. the trees anyway. Yeah, they they only grow where they and they don't know grow. when the fruit's ready. There's a lot of, lot a lot of mystery on, around yeah. this fruit. And now, in 2021, I think we could figure this out. <laughs> yeah, I think we have the science to figure out when fruit is ready, but we got to rely on elephants. So the other thing about this is it's um, like superstition. Yes. They call it the elephant tree, the marula tree. They also call it the marriage tree because it's got a really nice canopy. Oh, and I guess nice. a lot of people locally get married there. Mm-hmm. Like anything, when you're trying to sell something, the way to sell it is to say that it, it helps you get a boner. You know, he says it's very aphrodisiac oh, right. here. Ah, yes. So this one, they claim, mm-hmm. also happens. But I think you're going to love this stuff. Mm-hmm. So let's. Uh, What's the alcohol content on this? This one is. 17%, so it's low. And that's generally what you're going to get with liqueur. It's going to be usually about half of what, so that's 34 proof. Yeah, yeah. so uh, the beer is 5%, and sometimes Ooh. some of those IPAs are 8%, and then uh, wine is 17 to 21 or yeah. 22 or something like that. So it's 17. It's kind of, but by it's vol- kind of like But wine. by volume, that's the thing. This is a 750 mil bottle, so by volume. Uh, yeah, so it's you know, a lot less alcohol, kind of 34 proof. But what do you think? Of it? Yes. Yeah, it's good. I got a yeah. boner. I was going to say, I'm too yeah. it. It's like Irish cream. It's like Bailey's. But mm-hmm. it's like, I imagine it's probably higher quality. Uh, this would be good in a hot buttered rum. Yeah. We're getting the holidays mm-hmm. coming. Ooh, I, th- I, think, I think a lot of holiday cocktails. This is a great, I think yeah. this is a really great alternative to Bailey's. You yeah. Do a lot of that stuff. With the, I just... What I like about this is a it's sort of a nutty flavor, but also you get that sweetness from the from the fruit. It's a, it's a it's a fascinating. That's what kick ass in your coffee. Yeah, it's right? got a hazelnut creamer. Kind I of actually situation. so we're gonna have Mr. Black coffee liqueur. I actually want to do a little experimenting and pour some of that into here at some point. Ooh. Just see how that works. Uh, Twenty bucks a bottle for this. That's a oh, nice. the Amarula. Yeah, I mean it's it's just. Something that you just want to have, you want to sip, and again, the holidays to me, it just seems like I sitting around. You got a fire going, you you know Thanksgiving. You you, you just have a little bit of this after mm-hmm. after dinner. A little hot cocoa, a little uh, coffee, just pour it right in. You there. could do a lot. I I think coffee, you nailed it. Mm-hmm. I think any sort of a any sort of a hot alcohol drink. I think sure. this this would yeah. enhance it. So it's good. That's really yummy. I, that, that could go down quite easily. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. This is. I mean, again, <laughs> like you'd have to drink a lot of it to get. To get buzzed True. on this, just I'm because not gonna do. you yeah. can, uh, yeah, it's got. I don't know what it would do with eggnog, but it's kind of interesting. Oh boy, I was thinking about that because I was going to say to Chris, if we do one before the holidays, it's got to be eggnog because I know you love eggnog. So- I do. I mean, it's all it's so much sugar, but I love the uh, God. What's the the company does it in the glass bottle? Oh, yeah, I forget. Bill, you brought it in before. Something with a yeah. B, yeah. It's kind oh, of you nice. mean a, ready, a ready-made or eggnog? Something? Yeah, ready-made. I, I'm saying, like, I don't know. I kind of like, like, when I buy my heavy cream or, or eggnog or something like that, I go for the glass bottle. Yeah. I just feel like it's a higher... Everything's just a higher grade when it's in a glass bottle. I mean, I love home. I think homemade is the way to go with eggnog. I was thinking maybe we do something where we do a bunch of different variations on eggnog. Because you can impress people at parties. with. I think if you had this out... Instead of, because when, I mean, when else do people bust out Bailey's, right? It's just yeah. usually, right. does anybody drink it at any time other than the holidays? No, I, don't I think so. I think kids in parks. Oh, my dad. Like, <laughs> my dad has it on ice. Oh, your dad? Yeah, but he's the only person I know who's ever just, you know, drank. Like just, just in the, like, the summer, he's sitting out on the porch. Well, after dinner drink, typically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah it feel, Bailey's just feels been there and done that. This feels like a much more interesting and, story. And cheaper than Bailey's, too. I, I don't know what ba- Bailey's is probably about 30 some bucks a bottle, right? This is $20, sure. so it's it's not a bad uh, deal at all. So now we're going to move on to one that I'm I really uh, excited for you guys to try. It's a smaller brand out of Brooklyn, New York, guy named Joshua Morton, who I've known for a long time, started making this in his kitchen, basically, for 10 years. It's, a, it's called Barrow's. Here we go. Barrow's Intense Ginger Liqueur. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is obviously something that is made for mixing, but we're going to try it neat, too, which is absolutely delicious as well. It's got a cool bottle with the... There we go. Thank you, Chris. Yeah. I like ginger. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's great for a can too. This, this would be lovely. This is very mom and pop shop. I mean, he you know, he started making this commercially back in 2013, and um, it's still only two guys on the production end and four people working in the tasting room. That's all there is. Where do you get it? it uh, available in 42 states. You can get it online. He's got a tasting room in Brooklyn. Wow. So they use, <laughs> they use about a quarter pound of fresh ginger per bottle to make this stuff. And only four ingredients, this water, sugar, 
and, and neutral cane sugar and fresh ginger. There's no preservatives added. There's no bullshit in this. I mean, this is this is some good stuff. It's 33 bucks a bottle. Let's uh, let's take a sip here. What do you guys let's, think? By nature of what this is, this tasting, these are some of the best tasting drinks you've ever run in here. They're Aren't delicious. they great? They're yeah, yeah. I, mean, I was excited about this one because you can't, this one's you, good too. you can't really go wrong here. Um, they use two types of fresh ginger here. They use a Hawaiian varietal that's grown in China and then they uh, some organic ginger from Peru. On the rocks is how Josh recommends tasting it, but you could also do this in an old-fashioned. Oh, mm. th- this is a component you could add to a lot of drinks Good. to, to yeah, make it's them really kind of stand out. And um, you can taste the fresh ginger. I mean, you can taste. Yeah, no, this is a BS. this is a quality product, and you know it can be. I think this is kind of one of those bar basics things that you should have because you can spice, you can spruce up any drink. With a really good liqueur like this, mm-hmm. you might just go, oh, I got a little vodka, I got a little... What can how, I much, do? how much is it? 33 Sorry. bucks a bottle. Well, that's yeah. not bad. And uh, you could put this, you mentioned tea, you could put this as a, uh, put this in your tea on a cold day. Yeah, this go well yeah. with the tequila or a yeah. margarita as well. Yeah. Wine, yeah. wine Enthusiast gave this 93 points. That's pretty excellent. The highest <laughs> rated ginger liqueur on the market. <laughs> and I know pretty you're big... good. Yeah. It's, it's good. good. It's all good. I mean, it, it all, I mean, it's, you know, how can you go wrong? No, this is delicious. Now, what we're going to have here, New York Times just did a big piece on this, one of the hottest liqueur brands in the world out of Australia, Mr. Black Cold Brew Coffee Liqueur, okay? Mm, right. And this stuff is just wildly popular Artisanal, co- artisanal mm-hmm. Kahlua. <laughs> so, wow. Basically, their slogan is coffee after dark mm-hmm. is how they do this. So this is from Australia where coffee's, Tremendously popular over there. They, there. The beans are from Ethiopia, Colombia, and Papua New Guinea. Ooh. They made the distilleries just north of Sydney, Australia. Uh, founded in 2013. You can do this thing straight or on the rocks is what we're doing right now. But in an espresso martini, right. espresso martini, an old fashioned, a white Russian. You can just put pour some cream God over damn this. Right. Yeah. Mm. How is it? Hey, listen, wow. up, listen up, everyone. <laughs> Let's say you got a kid in soccer early in the morning on Saturdays, mm-hmm. or a yeah. daughter who's playing volleyball, and um, you know. You want to spice things up a little bit. You want to have the guys Take of the, the iced off. coffee drink. Yes. this is your this is your masquerade right oh here. Oh my god! It's yeah. fa- it's so yeah, it's really good. good, and it's just all it is is cold brew coffee and wheat vodka. That's mm. how they make it. Um, I want to try. I want to take like syrupy and delicious. I'm going to try a little bit of this amarulo. I'm going to pour it in here if you mm. guys want to try it. I well, think I this rude. this could work. Let me see here. Uh, oh look, it already looks good here. Yeah, see. I'm going to see with this amarulo in the. Uh, you can give me mine. Or whatever. Yeah, I got. I oh got shit! Line. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. That's like a milkshake. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Forty bucks a bottle for the Mister Black Excelsior. Yeah. <laughs> this is delicious. Isn't that good, mm. Dan? This is uh, you're you're uh, you're four for a glowing. Four. I'm gonna try some. I'm gonna go really crazy. I'm gonna put a little chinola <laughs> in there as well. Let's go for Harry. Here Buffalo. we go. I don't think the ginger will work, but I'm gonna do a little chinola in there. Let me do this. Let's see. All right. It's trying this. I, I like to push it to the point where I'm like, nah. Right. Yeah, Screwed this is up. good. Let's see. Um, all right, here we go. Fuck. Yeah, that's really God damn good. It's I mean, it's better good. without the chinola in it because uh, <laughs> just because the passion fruit, I think, sort of clashes a little bit I with the coffee. That. Okay. Now, we've done a lot of these newer ones. Now we got to do a little history here. This is one we all know and we all love. I'm sure your father must be familiar with this one. Dram Bowie. Mm. Drambo. There's always you know, the bottle in the back of the bar that had a little dust on it. But I mean, you know, w- what's the drink? Do you know the drink? What's the most famous drink made with Drambuie? I don't know. I know Drambuie. The Rusty Nail. Oh, oh really? Yeah, the Rusty know. Nail is one part Drambuie, two parts Scotch. Oh, it was. Jesus. It was the. It was. It was a, pro- a Prohibition era cocktail, but it was popularized by the Rat Pack. Oh, they, really? They, oh, they all drank. They all loved the Rusty okay. Nail. Rusty uh, Drambuie <laughs> has been around. Since 1745, uh, Bonnie Prince Charlie, very famous guy in Scotland, got lost the battle, had to escape, apparently left the secret recipe for Drambuie behind with somebody. And to this day, they say there's only three people in the world that know the recipe. Is, uh, is that the name of a family? Where, where does Drambuie come from? It's, like, it's, a it's crazy, funny you should say that. I did a little name. research like a here. On Andrach. Yeah. Andrach, I'm trying to, my Gaelic is bad, but Andram Buchek, which means the drink that satisfies. 
Oh, okay. And Chris left. I guess he apparently didn't feel it was necessary to help with the Drambui. Yes. It's all right. Oh, you don't worry. I, you probably got stuff to do over there. So uh, while he's coming back in, I'll tell you, again, one part one part Drambui, two parts scotch to make a rusty nail, which anybody who's a serious drinker has to have a rusty nail at some point in their life. America is where the rusty nail uh, gained fame. Again, made during Prohibition, but the Rat Pack... Everybody started drinking. This is eighty proof, by the way. This is oh. full on. That's so they would do, booze. yeah. So they would do two part whiskey, the Rat Pack, and uh, one, one part, part Drambui. And by the way, Drambui is made with Scotch as well. Um, here you go. Just get Doubling that. down. Yeah, it's. Um, here we go. Let me get that there. Gina, by the way, is running. I mean, I have speak. I have Andy is did the uh, L.A. marathon, right? Indeed, postponed oh. till today. Oh, it was postponed. It was usually oh, last in the year spring, or isn't it? Is it usually like an April thing? I don't know. Or something? It's probably some COVID thing, right? Well, right. That's what I'm guessing. Let's try this yes. trambo. Right. Are you ready? Here we go. Let's get this on. I mean, this is classic. Ooh. It's so good. Yeah, it's and nice. It's, yeah. Hmm. Tastes like kissing my grandma. <laughs> it's from the Isle of Skye, which is one of my favorite areas of Scotland, up in the northwest Ooh. part of Scotland. Uh, mm-hmm. That's where they make Talisker. I think we've had Talisker here on the show before. Mm-hmm. Little, uh, I mean, you get a little bit of sweetness. It. Yeah, it's it's got. It's got honey is as the the other key ingredient and some herbs and spices. Again, they're very secretive about mm-hmm. the recipe for drambuie. Mm-hmm. But this with a with a little bit of scotch in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thirty uh, bucks, Ace. Thirty bucks on this. Well, that's uh, inexpensive. So all of this, you could mm-hmm. buy all five of these mm-hmm. for I think under one hundred and twenty bucks. All five of them. Yeah, that's really all good. And it, it's good, and you should just have them, like, you know, at your house oh. for party, conversations, whatever. Yeah. You're 100% right. Question for Dan. I've always wondered, do liqueurs need to be refrigerated, and if so, which ones? No. not No. Uh, in fact, I, I specifically was asking Josh Morton, who does uh, Barrows, I said, once you open it, how long does it last? He said it last years, but if you've got it for years, you're doing something wrong. Sure, of course. I want you to drink it. Uh, you do not need to refrigerate it. Some people do. Some people, you can put them in the freezer. Okay. Any one of these, you can probably put in the freezer and get it. Co- Personally, I like to keep my stuff at room temperature. You don't have to. You don't have to refrigerate these, but Is I like to keep them. like the, the Irish cream or like the creamy drinks. Oh, uh, okay, I'm sorry. You're right. The Amarula refrigerate. That. Oh, okay. Yeah, Amarula refrigerate. Yeah, yeah. I, I brought that in chilled already, but uh, the other ones, yeah, just put them behind your bar. All right, let me give uh, Dan a plug and do a plug myself. Uh, By the way, uh, what we're drinking with Dan Dunn, and uh, there's a live show. Yes, Mm. this Friday. Yeah, where's that? NYC? The Stand Comedy Club in New York City. We're going to be there this Friday night, November 12th. Uh, Big J Okerson, who was just on your show not long ago. Big J, Justin Silver, Nasi Marrera, Brad Jaffe, and other guests will be swinging by. We're doing a happy hour event there. Nice. If you're in the city, Sweet. come and please tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, I listen to you on the Corolla show, and I will probably push you away. All right. <laughs> let me, uh, me. By the way, uh, Bill Shatner is going to be in the uh, second hour, and uh, he was awesome. I interviewed him uh, right before I left a couple days ago, and uh, 90 years old and just going New strong, New perspective man. on life now that he's been in space. Yeah, it's some interesting... <laughs> I... I You'll hear it in the interview, but I said, I want you to walk me right through every facet of getting into the rocket ship, what you were thinking, how long on the way up, how long on the way down, like Probably what you did. Four or five hours of, you know, physical tests. Talk about to the meters. And I was going to say, they had to have some concern that, you know, his ticker might not be able to handle that sort of pressure, right? He went down, I guess, a couple days early. Did a bunch of testing and 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 all that. But it was it was a really it was really insightful and really interesting. And uh, also uh, talked a little shit about George Decay. So we got that coming up. <laughs> oh, God, First, I'll tell you about Indochino. People are uh, well, they're a little too into wearing uh, sweatpants. I got used to the old kind of sweatpants. Never been a better time to upgrade your look with Indochino's Black Friday event. Has their uh, lowest prices of the year on uh, suits and shorts and uh, outerwear. Plus, uh, you can save even more with the code ADAM. I uh, wear their stuff all the time. I wore them on TV shows. I wear it on Kimmel all the time. Talk about um, your uh, Indochino custom clothing. Oh, sorry. i got to fix that, Chris. Let's see. Um, measure yourself on the website. 
All right. So it's uh, you can get it customized. You can measure yourself on the website. It just takes about 10 minutes. Every piece is made to your exact measurements. Customize every detail. Get your suit in three to four weeks. Indochino suits start at just $2.99. Shirts from $45. All customized. Sorry. All customizations included. The stuff is high end. It's nice. I wear it all the time. It's Indochino, right, Dawson? Get away from the video calls and back into looking and feeling amazing. Indochino's, Indo, Indochino's Black Friday event runs from November 8th to the 29th. Save even more and get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more by using promo code Adam at Indochino.com. It's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at I N D O C H I N O.com. Promo code Adam. The truth of the George Takei story is he'd come in every so often in, 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 uh, a day in the week or something like that to do his, to perform his role. And the show lasted three years. So once or twice a week, I'd see this guy. And then at the end of three years, I, I never saw him again. Never saw him again. 55 years later, he's still saying how much he hates me. I, I have no idea why. 